you premiered a cut of this at Cannes. Was this yes. was that last year? It was last year. It was in 2011, and I have been sort of living and breathing with this film uh, so much in the past three years um, that I've I've really had a difficult time gauging any sort of sense of time. Like just mm. the way time has been passing. Like I like even now in 2012, it's because I've just been so engulfed in it. You know, the movie for 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 so long now. I I my you know, the whole. I was having a conversation with somebody today, actually, and we were talking about the movie Weekend um, mm-hmm. that I remember seeing and loving. And he was like, you know, oh, you had seen Weekend, and I said, oh yeah, I saw it, you know, last year. He was like, you mean this year? I was like, no, last year. But you know, just to give you, <laughs> but it was it was actually <laughs> this year. But you know, it's uh, whatever. But it's just it's so you know, it's weird because when you when you immerse yourself in something. Uh, so intensely, your your whole sense of time can become very very skewed. Sure, um, that's kind of where I'm at with, with with the film at the moment, and I'm very 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 glad that the film is sort of now finally out there. Uh, we there were a lot of festivals that the film wasn't able to go to because it was simply on the back burner being finished, mm-hmm. and sort of you know the more the more proper way. But it, it, yeah, it had appeared. At the, the Cannes Film Festival, in, in a you know, in a rather respectively half baked way, um, and I think it, it wasn't anybody's, it wasn't anybody to blame or anything necessarily. It was just sort of a circumstantial thing. Uh, there were there were sort of time constraints, um, mm-hmm. and 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 sort of a myriad of things. There were there were a lot of things that I'm I'm really grateful. Well, first off, I'm really grateful that the Cannes Film Festival allowed us to have the opportunity to show it in, in that sort of, you know, unfinished work in progress right. form. Well, this film, just like Tarnation, is so unique um, and it's so mm-hmm. personal to you. So to kind of follow up on the process of finishing it, how did you, was there a moment when you when you knew, okay, it's done, or was it just a question of, okay, I have to let this go? <laughs> oh, that's a really wonderful question. Um, actually, it, it was sort of it was kind of kind of the opposite of what you're saying. Pre, pre, you know, pre can it was like, okay, I have to let this go <laughs> because the hourglass is running out, and the film has gotten into the Cannes Film Festival. Um, even though the Cannes Film Festival knew we were going to be sort of tweaking things here and there, very subtle things. But um, but then you know, for this last hurrah, this last version of it, um, this final version that's out, that's going to be at Outfest, that was at BIM, it, It's uh, it's done, but there's still a small window that says I still have to let this go because it's not quite a film that I think I had envisioned. And that's not to say it's a bad film or to discount the film at all or anything like that. But but I think what I mean by that is when you're experientially going through something and you know like all the kind of epic stories and sub-stories and, and all that it can be, all that can be conveyed... Um, just can't be conveyed in a film because, you know, going through an experience like this, kind of, you know, being a kind of perpetual caretaker of somebody that you love, and that whole experience of what that is, I mean, I think I've, I've really succumbed to the fact that you can't, there's just some things you can't transpose cinematically, um, at least for me. And And I was talking to somebody about this the other day, and they were telling me that, probably because I'm so immersed in this that what I'm thinking is not conveying a story is actually conveying a huge story to other people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like Mm -hmm. what I'm thinking is sort of at two level two, maybe other people are interpreting it as 10 because I'm, it's my life and I'm so used to it. So I think in a lot of ways with that respect, I've, I, I, with this story at this point in 2012, I feel like I may have lost a little perspective so it's either you know either I know, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but anyway, I think you know. No, what I, mean. I know I know exactly what you're <laughs> what you're saying. I, I, yeah. I, and that and that's where the audience reaction becomes so yeah. valuable, where you can kind right, of gauge right. what have what have I achieved here? <laughs> right, know? right. And and is this something I can easily say now is is finished and definitive, as much as definitive as you can be with us trying to get a circumstance like this on you know into a 
a form that you can express to people with 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 the power of cinema. This film is absolutely a conclusion to uh, to Tarnation. You know, there was there was a long time where I was saying it was a kissing cousin or a, a pro, somebody had said proto sequel, which I really I like that term <laughs> proto sequel. Um, <laughs> it's it's definitely something else. Well, with these two with these two films, I, I'm curious to know from you, how mm-hmm. do you think the process of assembling these two films have ha, has in, enriched or deepened your relationship with, to your mother, whom whom you were close oh, to, you've always been close to. It's definitely definitely enriched it in 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 tons of ways. It's um, you know, on one hand, I. Still, you know, it's only been eight years since all of this has this happened. You know, or 2004, I guess, is when it really started. So that yeah, eight nine years, I don't know, something like that. But um, so you know, we were just I was we were just a fairly I would say fairly normal family before all of this because nothing has ever been sort of normal. But we were before all of this happened. You know, we were just a family who I think had a story to tell, and I was. You know, even as a kid, I was, I was just telling my son this the other day, I was trying to explain the dynamic of what it was like to sort of grow up with my mom, you know, when I was his age, when I was younger, and always feeling like even when I was six, seven years old, having to sort of over, kind of compensate or overcompensate for some of the behavior that she was doing, you know, and I would try to sort of defend her or, you know, as I became older, I think I said, you know, well, she was just a hippie. She took a lot of acid, you know, just trying to, like, kind of create these weird allusions to, you know, what was really going on. And we, we and I, so there was always this backstory, this, this way that I felt like I needed to explain everything. And, and even, even upon meeting new friends during my formative years, I felt like I couldn't, I started to feel like I couldn't edit anything out because it would eventually become exposed and I would have to sort of explain everything. Yeah. So I think I was becoming exhausted. You know, on one hand, I felt like, oh, you don't owe anybody any explanation about anything. It is what it is. But then after a while, it just occurred to me that it, that was so a part of my DNA and a part of my upbringing and my and who I was, you know, at, you know, reacting to growing up with a, with a mom like this. Um that I, I just I kept talking about it over and over again. It became this dialogue. So that, I think in a lot of ways that's where Tarnation came out of, and that's where ultimately the, con- the conclusion of that came out of with this film. And because now that I've made the film, it's just it's changed things a little bit in that I'm I'm kind of haunted by the idea that I've made both films mm-hmm. on one on one level. Like on, half of me feels sort of perpetually haunted like I, I wake up in the middle of the night you know when you when you're I don't know if you've gone through this experience but at night you know when you're kind of on the cusp of being half asleep and half awake or you're just about to you know go to sleep you always get these sort of like weird raw epiphanies of things you, you sort of see things for what they really are for me it's like it's existential things like we're all going to die one day and then it's these films I've made <laughs> <laughs> right before I go to sleep at night, and it's sort of you know like yeah 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 you know what did I do, mm-hmm. I you know and I just think about it, and I sort of start thinking back in back in my mind's eye about just the way the films were made, just the, the exposure of both of us and it, all of us, and it you know it gives me butterflies in my stomach, but then it, on the same token, I know that. I think the films are, are conveying a beautiful message and I'm and I'm and I'm sort of willing to make that sacrifice and take the risk I think of conveying that message which is I think ultimately I'm hoping people can have more empathy for the mentally ill in a nutshell. Yes, yes. Well, I think that I think that anyone that truly appreciates film in any yeah. form and and anyone that makes film I think that's the that's the one major characteristic that distinguishes them. It's a sense of empathy. Um, yes. And yes. that's absolutely what I get from your films. 
but actually, I, that's part of what I was very curious about because I, you know, every family ha- has has their tor- turmoil and challenges. Sure. But, uh, and and my dynamics are certainly not the same as yours. But I would think if if I were to make a film involving my family, I would mm-hmm. be so torn between wanting to show them at their best and wanting to be truthful. Of course. Of course. Was, that, was that a yin and yang for you? God, yes. Absolutely, yeah. And and even, you know, and in any it's weird because you know, because Walk Away Renee is so similar to Tarnation in some ways, you know, and obviously it's the same subject matter. Um it, it kind of goes back and reparaphrases aspects of what aspects of what was sort of probably learned in Tarnation, but um even well before I even made Tarnation, I had written a I had acquired only so much footage up to a certain point, and this was even before the uh, kind of tragedy with my mom, um, travesty with my mom, you know, having overdosed on lithium. Even before that had happened, I knew that I'd wanted to sort of augment the footage that I had acquired up to that point of everybody in my family. And I had even written a, uh, I wrote two, I wrote one screenplay with two different working titles. Uh, one was called Lucid, and the other one was called The Day I Disappeared. Mm. And um, they were totally fictitious. Um, it was a totally fictitious screenplay that sort of took the idea of my footage and re- sort of repurposed it into fictitious circumstances. Uh, it was very, it's kind of like an elongated Twilight Zone episode in a lot of ways. I talked about the the notion of my mother's mental illness by sort of happening by way of some sort of supernatural occurrence and um it was very out there and weird and there were a lot of sort of magical realism elements that were going to be thrown in and then you know over the course of time I just negated that whole idea and began to realize as I kept dabbling with the footage over time before I started like signing off on what it was going to be um mm-hmm that I needed to sort of surrender to the truth of the footage and, 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 and just be truthful with, with all of it with, and, and, you know, with the screenplay, we were going to refer to ourselves as, as having different names and um, it was going to be very challenging, needless to say, to try to <laughs> take the footage from the past and re-augment it into something totally fictitious. But I think, you know, as I was living with the footage for a while, and of course when my mom had eventually had her um had the overdose um and and when i realized you know at least with tarnation that that was going to be the end of that film or the end of me filming my family at that point Mm -hmm. um that's when i it occurred to me to to be truthful and just show everything and um as much as i could and i think there you know believe it or not there there were nuances of things that I, I felt like I just wasn't able to show for one reason or another, um, just, just morally, I guess, in a lot of ways. And then, and then there were a lot of things and situations that I wish that I had had a camera on during, um, because I think it would have lent a, a more rich um, outlook on onto the whole circumstance. Yeah. Well, yeah. Walk Away Renee is, in, in many ways, it's a. I think you've spoken of this. It's kind of, it kind of serves as a bridge between mm-hmm. the documentary and the narrative world. Definitely, um, definitely. It's for sure a transitional film for me. Yeah. Um, and I was saying before, not too long ago, that I, I don't think I ever want to make another documentary again. Um, but I think I need to to retract that and say that I don't think I ever want to make another personal documentary again because as of about four weeks ago <laughs> a uh, like like a lot of things happen sometimes they're good and sometimes they're bad this happened to be pretty spectacular um, a a uh, a new story um, of, a, of, a, of a new project is kind of toppled into my lap I don't want to say what it is just yet but it's it's a documentary and um, uh, could potentially be just a, a wondrous uh, biopic wow. slash documentary, biomentary <laughs> on somebody that I just really, really love. And yeah. uh, it literally came knocking on my door. Um, 
So, you know, I, I, it looks as though I may have one other documentary in the works. Um, hopefully, if everything goes into fruition, and then um, I'm definitely looking to, to, to segue into narrative films just after this. Well, in terms of, narr- in terms of narrative, um, mm-hmm. you know, these films that you've made are so intimate and personal and confessional. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think you could feel the same level of investment in a narrative? Uh, I, you know what I, I think I'll have more. I like not having the, the sense of control uh, when you're making a documentary, but at the same time, the, when you don't have that much control, it can often become very chaotic, too, mm-hmm. depending on how you're making it. So I think with making narratives, I, I, I'm i really sort of, I'm very into the idea of making narratives, let's just say that much, but I, I wanna, I'm really interested in doc hybrids, uh-huh. um, so I think in any road I go down in terms of filming fictional stories, um, I, I might be into the idea of using unknown people or mixing unknown people with, you know, with maybe more known people. Well, you strike me as someone that, that um based on the films you know Tarnation and Walk Away Renee what I what I've yeah. seen of your work that likes to walk a high wire uh, <laughs> uh and and I think of other filmmakers that did that in the narrative structure and oh, I think yeah. some of some of them are your idols I mean people like Cassavetes Oh absolutely absolutely I think didn't I don't I have never read any press about Cassavetes but wasn't he notoriously canned like didn't he wasn't the, the press weren't fans of his at, right. at some given points? Is that true? Or I don't. I think not that, I that's, think, any, not that that's of any consolation at all. I mean, whatever. I think you he, was so, he was so raw, <laughs> raw and personal that uh, people kind of felt assaulted by him. <laughs> very often. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I, I, I re- I'm a humongous fan of his, and um, I mean, if I could make an analogy of film of of like a. Of filmmakers that I, I could easily be inspired by. If I were to take like maybe four essential filmmakers and you know kind of create a compilation with them of, of the kinds of movies I'd want to make, it would it would be somewhere you know in in the pot that stirred would be you know Cassavetes, uh, maybe a few drops of Lynch by way of you know Robert Altman and well I don't know. Orderowski, I don't know. <laughs> it could be like a bunch of things, but um, I'm 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 into I'm into pretty real things, you know. And, and I and I love seeing, um, you know, I just I love seeing truth and reality, but I also love seeing mystical, strange things happening within that truth. Right. You know, I, I love well, that kind of cinema. And, and it's <laughs> present in your films. I mean, you found. You found, uh, you know, not to be pre- you know, pre- uh, pretentious about it, but uh, you've kind yeah. of found the poetry in your reality. Oh, uh, thank you. And I, and I think those filmmakers did the same thing that you're talking about. Thank you very much. I, it would be lovely to be on a roster with those guys one day, hopefully. Well, I, I love your movies, yeah, and uh, I, mean, I can't, cannot thank you enough for giving me time today to, to talk to you about them. <laughs> oh, it's my pleasure. It's